weirdest things. I, I, I hope I get them all right. I muse when I walk around, you know, because I might have been about home, home, um, sure. home products. Yeah. I mean, in regard to the interoperability, how do you work with um, something like, like, is there any plans to introduce something like Alexa or yeah. other systems? So right now, this has already got Alexa yeah. in there. Uh, okay. We have a devices button where you just tap a non-UMI device. Mm. Uh, Amazon Alexa, Philips Hue, yeah, gotcha. uh, Nest, Thermostat are already in there. And there's a button for any other Z-Wave products. Yeah. Um, we're trying to expand that line. Yeah. Uh, but obviously our main focus is expanding our own yeah. line of accessories. Yeah. But to be honest, with, with our resources, we don't want to you know, get so heavy into something if a competitor is doing it very well. We'll just start using it with their product. Yeah, totally, exactly. Totally. exactly yeah. I mean, is there something you're not doing that you're looking at building, expanding into your range? Any particular, um, um, I don't know. Distributing in Europe. <laughs> No, um, uh, you're, you're yeah, talking about enough. the products. Um, honestly, there are there are lots of ideas. Yeah. You know, like oh, we can have a, a ceiling curtain for people that have a ceiling light, and but that's a, such a small niche market. I mean, how do you measure the um, the benefit of a product? Like, I still see so many times people will have something like a smart light, yeah. connected lights, great. Yeah. Great if you want to do it at home. I, I'm out at the office, say, and I want to turn my lights on, no problem. But they'll get home, and they literally still are pushing a button. Yes, exactly. Like a little device. Exactly. It has to be connected to something. Right, already. which which is one argument. Uh, yeah. People that go through the phones to do all of their smart home, Precisely. we say, how is this better? Yeah. Now That's you're question. draining your, your phone battery, which could be useful for other things, mm. not turning on your lights. Mm. Mm. And you have to to walk around your house with your own phone mm. so you have one less hand mm. <laughs> it doesn't make any sense that's, that's exactly what I mean then they have to swipe oh where's my home app and well, like oh my gosh well, the one I'm seeing a lot lately is the um, the idea of a smarter I won't say smart but smarter product that supposedly can tell who's in the home so we can tell uh, um, like who you like are which uh, person oh, okay. and what they, their movements are and I say well how on their phone I say it's what so they got to carry their phone around yeah <laughs> yeah <it's> like, oh. <laughs> You can do by height, you know. Like, like, you know <laughs> so, I, I know we're not quite in the, um, you know, the implant stage of, right, <laughs> you yeah, know, the fully immersive something, experience. Something. Maybe, maybe in the future. But to answer your question on how do we, how do we judge, yeah. you know, what's what's worth it? So of course we we listen a yeah. lot, um, and this is a Chicago company. Okay, so uh, a lot of the head team has spent decades in the U.S. Yeah. and some of them have lived in China for a few years as well. Yeah. So they're listening on seeing what's possible to manufacture yeah. at a good price, but also. So what, what are people wanting? So this, this water sensor is the newest uh, piece that we have here. That's for plumbing, is it? It's, uh, yeah, if anything for yeah. floods, you know, yeah. what happened. It's not sexy. There's a water sensor there in a box for free. Yeah. But it's not connected. It just beeps loudly if it's wet. This one, of course, works with the system and all that. So how, how advanced are the, sens- the water sensors getting? Like, are they at the stage now where they can turn things off? Or not yet? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Um, so we have the, you know, if and the... Uh, if then kind of system where if the door is open then we have a conditional stage and the temperature is between this then make this action yeah which is nice because again getting away from carrying your phone we want to automate as much as possible my favorite piece is actually the simplest it's just a four button uh, favorites so it doesn't do anything, oh. right? You need you need other things to work. Oh. But uh, if you have kids, yeah. you can say, all right, I wake up in the morning, my wife touches this button, the coffee machine turns on, the lights turn yellow, the blinds go up, her favorite morning playlist starts. While she's brushing her teeth, all of this stuff is happening. By the time she's done, the coffee's ready. Oh, all these, like, oh that's lovely. When, you, uh, when the kids want to watch a film, they push this button, the curtains go down, the lights turn purple, the TV turns on, the volume reduces. Reduces. The, the radio, if it's on, goes off. And I said, wow, my grandma, you know, she doesn't need to even use this, even though it's simple. I can just program it for her. And I say, grandma, when you go to church, before you leave the house, touch that button. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. So it's so simple. And I don't want my grandma to carry a phone around. You see, this is a lot. But you see, this is a Galaxy Gear. But you can put your analog watch or smart watch like uh, Apple Watch or Galaxy Gear. But the strap itself is connected to your smartphone. Yeah. Right? So when you get a call from your friend, you're gonna be noticed. And if you press the button and put it on your ear like this, yeah. 
this device is actually going to receive the sound data and re convert it into a vibration. So the vibration is going to cross your fingers and if you put it on your ear, the vibration is going to actually convert again into the sound that you can hear. So you're going to be able to hear what the other person is saying and also there's a microphone inside so you can actually talk while listening to the is other. Actually, it's quite different from boom conduction because boom conduction directly vibrates the boom yeah. over here, over here, right? Yeah. To receive that as a sound. Yeah. But this doesn't need to be necessarily the boom. So it's a body conductivity. So it's quite different. That is very different. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Is it possible to try without of course, having a phone? Of course, of course. Yeah, you have your hand. Oh. You, you go for it. Anyone sees me? Okay. Really okay. <laughs> Step over. So, put it on your ear, like this. Yep. Go a little bit more. Yeah, here. Okay. Like as if you're, you don't want to hear anything. It's very muffled. I have quite bad hearing, so it's possible I wanted to try it. Uh, no. Not, not inside. Okay. Yeah. Better. Yes. Have some. Much yeah, better. it's not so loud. These are still the prototypes. <laughs> yeah. So now they are writing there. Can I talk to my phone? <laughs> <laughs> uh, Actually, there's a microphone here, so the place would be over here. Yeah. It's very James Bond, isn't it? Really? Yeah. Yep. I have quite bad hearing, so I'm not too. <laughs> you couldn't hear it? It could be with yeah. muffled, but I have bad hearing, so. It's crazy. So you're going to have a perfect privacy over what you're hearing from the other. It's a really good idea. And you don't even need a... I'm surprised it's taken so long. Like, it's you guys are first, right? Yep. Yeah, uh, we've started two years ago. Yeah. And we came in here... Uh, last year we were in the Samsung station. Yep. Yeah. But right now we are invited by the uh, so. Even better. Mm -hmm. Yeah, super cool. And what's what's next? Like, are you gonna look at adding more functionalities? Actually, uh, right now we have a. Uh, well, the main function is receiving the phone calls, and we have basic ones like basic ones that the other smartwatches have, like maybe keeping track of how many steps that you take per day. Three body metrics. Yes. Yeah. Uh, health monitoring. Uh, alarm. Like yeah. when you get a text message and a. A phone call. And what's this kind of special uh, no, feature that we put in function. here is because this is uh, the main function is calling. Yeah. Yeah. And, uh, five LEDs, right? Yeah. But yeah. you don't know who's gonna call, who's calling. It's not showing your name, yeah. mom or dad. Like, do you remember the flip phones when you had oh, yeah, those yeah. and you'd be like, oh, don't want to open it. Oh, yeah, 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 exactly. <laughs> yeah. But according to some of the statistics, the, mo the person, the people who you are calling the most are limited like three to five people. True. So maybe your mom or your fiancé or your friends, best friends. So you can actually, with the application, you can set. So light one, your mom. Light two, your dad. Something like that. So you can know who's calling at least the, those five people. And also we, are, we give alarm to... Product. You can actually. Yeah, this okay, you wanna you wanna call your mom at least yeah, five times a day, uh, five times a month. So it's gonna keep track. Yeah. So it's gonna alarm you. Okay, you need to call your mom. <laughs> <laughs> so you keep you keep in touch, right? Mm, that's actually a good idea. Yeah. <laughs> so that's inside this uh, product already. Yeah. But what we are thinking for the next generation is that. Okay, so if you're calling with your friend. Well, you may talk like maybe 30 minutes or 40 minutes. Putting your hand like this is gonna kind of hurt, right? It's gonna get tired. So uh, you're gonna put motion sensor in it. So and a speakerphone, so that if you put it on your ear, you're gonna hear it. But if you put it on like this, you can hear from the speakerphone, so that you're not gonna be able to get tired from it. So what have you got here? So, we're Bear Conductive, we're here from London, and what we have here is a demonstration board. 
So if I touch the black paint here, it triggers the sensor. The black paint is our conductive paint. It's called electric paint. Down here is connected to the touch board. The touch board has 12 touch sensors. And uh, since the paint is connected to the sensors, I can trigger the sensors by touching the paint. Mm -hmm. So in this case, I'm just triggering a sound file. But depending on how I program the touch board, I can have different functions as well. So I can either uh, turn up a light with it, or I can connect it to a different software, and then I can start playing videos or something. So our products are aimed for quite a broad spectrum. It's used by children, as well as uh, engineers, professionals, yeah. designers, uh, and education. So yeah. What kind of range does it have? Like, mean, like how far away does the, can the paint be from the, um, the connectors? It depends on um, your application because no. the paint has a resistance of 55 ohms per square. So depending on your sensor size, uh, it increases the resistance. So we normally say up to a couple of meters. Yeah. So you don't recommend to paint your whole house with it, yeah. but you can definitely have some art installations that are yeah. as big oh. as these walls. Yeah. And yeah. What, like you mentioned people, like there's a range of audiences. I mean, who are your main customers at the moment? Uh, we definitely say a lot of artists are using it, a lot of makers, so people who are doing their own oh. prototypes, their own yeah. projects. And where did the idea come from? Um, the idea originally started with electric paint. Yeah. Um, it was the four founders of Square Conductive. They all went to university together, and it was the final year project. And from there on, just cascade into the touch board, yeah, and then cool. the touch board starter kit. Yeah. Do you have there's a shop in Berlin that has like music hacker stuff? Berlin. No, so we're based in London. Yeah. Uh, we don't have a shop there either. We are all online. Yeah, and we have resellers. I don't suppose we'll sell that much through it, but it's a good show. Yeah, definitely. Which one is it? Common ground. It's Common ground. Yeah, yeah. yeah, they have like yeah. all sorts of hacker like music projects. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Sounds good. Yeah. They would love this. <laughs> yeah, it's great. Yeah. Um, they have the small concerts in there as well. Yeah. It's does, not it, that does it work outside as well as inside? So the paint itself is uh, water-based, yeah. so it'll wash off the weight, but right. you can seal it, yes. so what we've done here. Yeah. Um, in that case, it is waterproof, uh, apart from where it's with the connection here, down there it's not waterproof. Mm -hmm. So what you can do is you can have it outside, seal it, and then have inside the whole connections. Is there any um, plans to move into something like body paint? Like, I, I run a lot about wearables, and there's always like someone trying to make either a bit of plastic into it with sensors in it, or... You know, really thin fabrics. I can imagine something like a body paint. Mm. What's it like? We don't we don't advertise as body paint, no. No, because we don't uh, we don't say that it's the cosmetic, and we don't have all the certification. Yeah. Oh yeah, so, yeah. it's not toxic, but we yeah. don't. Yeah, yeah. I, I get your drift. Yeah. <laughs> but you can yeah. use it on textile. Yeah, it really works on any surfaces. That'd be so, really cool. Yeah, yeah. 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 So that's people made. Using, uh, That's pretty cool. Yeah, there's uh, one guy who did a kind of a concert with his T-shirt just by touching the electric paint on his shirt. Yeah. <laughs> can you do? Is it? Uh, hang on, I can test. So if I want to play the piano, I can only play one key at a time. You can do, you can do, because um, so first of all, this is just programmed to only play one sound at a time. Yeah. But also, you can set it to MIDI mode. That way, you can have a piano. MIDI as well. Right? Yeah. Um, you can actually have like. A, Oh, in those streets. Yep. Somebody's not there as well. Yeah, I've mentioned someone who made a proper piano using yeah. four of yeah, yeah, yeah. the transport, and he did like an entire... And how much is the starter kit? So it's 150 euros. And that's paint. There is everything, so there's the paint. It comes with the hardware. Yeah. You know. Yeah. It comes with three three project ideas. One of them is to replicate this. Yeah. This bad That's boy So you can kind of teach yourself. Mm -hmm. Does it come with the speaker as well? Yeah. 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 That's good. Speaker, oh. cable, paintbrush. Can you get one? <laughs> so you have yeah. everything to make three projects. Yeah. The first one is the house, and you get more familiar with yeah. technology. Yeah. Yeah. And how to turn up your. That's such a cool I'm idea. I'm an ex-musician, so. Yeah. I'm, just, I'm just gonna have to play for five minutes. Yeah. All right. Okay. And we're gonna launch the Kickstarter later in September. Oh, right, okay. So it's not actually available yet. With a new, yeah, this is available but for a new product. So oh, we're going to introduce what's, a new product. What's the new one? The new okay. kit will combine the power of the electric paint with a new board that okay. we are we have developed, and it will be about a light as well. Okay, all right. Yeah. Really cool. So, really cool. Such a good idea. Um, 
So I'm here with uh, Braggy, and your name is? My name is Johannes. Hi. Johannes. So we've seen quite a lot of uh, new uh, smart, intelligent earphones sort of following after AirPods, but AirPods were not the first. Um, but I think, as far as Kate mentioned, you also have Alexa built in. Is that true? Yes. yes. Um, so, yeah, tell us a bit more about the Dash and uh, what you can do with it. Yeah, you're absolutely right. So uh, there are a lot of competitors now entering the market. Um, actually, Bragi was the first one who introduced a new category called hearables. So you basically take the variables and put it into your ears because you Very hear. good. <laughs> um, so um, there are always coming more competitors, but uh, I would say, or I'm pretty sure there will be still a lot of steps ahead because what most of the competitors are doing is a Bluetooth headset. So yeah. they are basically dumb. They do not anything smart. Um, that's always why the word hearable is like confusing. That's also why we call our headphones ear computers. So what it basically is, is we have four gigabyte of offline storage and they can work completely standalone. Wow. So you can leave your smartphone at home yeah. and um, you can go for a swim, for a cycle but, um, and also for a run. Um, I, I said swim, so they are one up to one me- up to one meter. They are waterproof, and that's also one of the special um, things that uh, is very special about the Bragi um, headphones, um, about Bragi the Dash. Um, the Dash Pro is now the following version okay. um, of the Dash. We know that uh, a first mover product always has its issues. In our case, it was the Bluetooth connectivity. Um, so what we improved now with the Dash Pro is definitely the Bluetooth connectivity. So right now you shouldn't have any issues anymore with the Bluetooth connectivity. We extended the battery lifetime, so we have right now five hours um, of runtime. And on top of that, there's still the charging case, so you can um, have up to 30 hours on the go. Um, what we improved them as well is the listening experience. So we included now foam tips as well as the um, other tips, um, which are which are called the fit sleeves. And with them, you adjust the size. So we're always working that we find the perfect size for your ear. Okay. Yeah. Um, because we want to make sure that you can use it for any activity you want and that they don't fall out. And from memory, you've got some biometrics in there as well, which is great because the ear is one of the more accurate places to record body, you know, what's going on in your um, that's uh, totally true what you said. So with a smart wedge, you always have the problem that's uh, falling around. And with us, with our device, we're always sitting into your ear. And with the sleeves, we're making sure that it doesn't um, fall around in your ear. So that's why we can measure it quite accurate. Um, and we are currently measuring the heart rate. On top of that, we are measuring your movements of the head. And with your movement of the head, we can detect how many steps you made in the, when you are swimming we can detect how many laps you made um, and there are a lot of more functionality that you can do by, so by tracking whilst the device is not connected to a smartphone so offline it's tracking your your steps and etc and it's also you can play music and things but I guess when it's online then comes in the Alexa integration and you can do other things as well yeah um, just one thing that I also want to mention on the activity side so yeah. what we built in is a kind of a neural network so as soon as you start running or cycling or swimming, we will detect um, according to the activity after half a second up to up to two or three seconds, we will detect what are you doing. So if you start running, we will detect that you start running and if you stop because of whatever, we will stop your activity or pause your activity. Um, and yeah, and as soon as you come online, we always have integrated Siri and Google Now from the very beginning and also that's a difference so we are independent from which, yeah, yeah, of course. which device oh, okay. you're using. Okay. okay, so it could be even Bixby if you wanted to. Yeah. Yeah, okay. Um, so, and you can use it also with a PC where you don't have okay. a system right now. Okay. But that's why we started now with the Alexa. Yeah. Um, so, we are very proud that we are now started to integrate Alexa because we are the first device kind yeah. of where you can be on the go and use Alexa. Um, so, what we did is um, you can connect um, the device to your app yeah. and the app is basically enabling all and the features. And this is still with Bluetooth though. Yeah. yeah. So you, at the moment, of course, on the long term, we want to get rid of the smartphone. So we want to connect directly to a network yeah. and you can leave your smartphone at home because smartphones is not a natural gesture, not a natural interface. Yeah. If you yeah. look around and see people yeah. with their smartphones running through the city. Yeah, that's yeah. True. So what we want to do is enable the people be having a discrete assistant into the year. And yeah. that's also one of the reasons why we integrated Alexa. So you just need to join forces with one of the gesture recognition 
startups. Um, Bixie. Bixie was a French company we saw that had this little thing you could wave and it would recognize gestures. That would be quite cool. Also, that's <laughs> something that we are already looking into. So what we could imagine is that instead of touching your ear, yeah. which also is already a big step ahead because it's still quite natural, but what a next step would be, for example, that we um, recognize your gesture if you're doing yeah. something in front of your head. So yeah. something like next track, play, yeah. pause. And one, um, one last question. And just because I'm into wireless headphones, but I'm not really into sport, but a lot of the wireless headphones are really aimed at people who do sports. I mean, do you think there's enough? Obviously, you're going to say yes, but do you think there's enough interest for someone like me who's not really interested in the sports aspect, but just wants some good quality wireless headphones as well? So, <laughs> we came up with a headphone because we know that there are people who don't have the budget that you pay, for example, on the Dash Pro. Yeah, yeah. Um, that's why we came up with a headphone and the headphone has still a lot of okay. um, good reasons uh, it, it's a lot of pros compared to all the other products the non-pro. we have okay. the, the longest battery lifetime we have a full remote control instead of all the other products yeah. so you can we have still the audio transparency feature so where you can enable the path through of your surroundings so imagine you are cycling but you cannot hear your surroundings yeah. that's always bad yeah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. also that yeah. we don't yeah. we are not the only one in this area who yeah. has this feature Jabra we interviewed but well, yeah. we were yeah. the first movers and we want to be still <laughs> the first movers by enabling people more with this feature. Yeah. So what we already do is we are raising your voices. So yeah. lowering the surroundings but raising yeah. the voices. So you've obviously got a, a captive audience. I mean, your Kickstarter campaigns have been pretty successful. I think probably some of the most in Europe. Most yeah. so we, yeah. I don't... I haven't looked up what the latest projects were, but I think we're... I just we're, know because I wrote about you last week. <laughs> ah, okay. So probably we are still uh, the most successful. <laughs> successful Kickstarter campaign in Europe. Yeah. Well, there we go. That seems like a, you could just say that anyway. No one will check. So. <laughs> Excellent. Okay. Thanks yeah. very much. Thank you. Nice to meet you. So, do you know the case of Berlin, New Berlin Airport? Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> Great. This is, you know, that's, it's seven years delayed and it's six times over budget and has 65,000 building errors now. You know that. So... We understand the problem, and and what's what is the what's the pro, what's the main problem? Most design is based on intuition. There is lack of verification on any part on any type of design. There are many many changes happening, and no one's checking them finally. Yes, yes, and there are changes happening on the construction side and everywhere because there were errors at the very beginning. So having that, uh, and there, generally the construction industry is like uh, in a Walkman innovative phase. It's very, very conservative. Yeah. So we came up with idea to create a platform for smart resolution that uses artificial intelligence, machine learning to solve the most pending problems of the construction industry. And one of the one of the tools that we are having on the platform is Code Checker that verifies if the design is actually full filling the building codes, which uh, actually is going to, I mean, you give a solution in a, within a click, first of all, and uh, second of all, there will be no delays later because the design is verified uh, regarding the construction uh, load, the, the building codes. Um, that's, that's the idea, and there are many other tools on the platform that we are creating. How, okay, let's just pick one as an example, one of the codes. How do you actually do that? The, there's the, the German building code. There's like about 1,000. Yeah, so how do you actually verify it? Oh, so imagine that, uh, so imagine, so now buildings, uh, so when you have a... The design of the building, that's a model, yeah? That's a model, mo- often there's a 3D oh, model. Oh, okay, so you're basing it on the model, not on the final build. No, 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 on the oh. final build. Okay. We, we have to verify the design first to make sure that it's uh, correct. Okay. What if the, um, the final product doesn't match the model? <laughs> oh, it'll never, it'll never match Which the model. I suspect might have happened No, the, it, will never, it will never match. I mean, uh, in the industry you have, uh, like, design drawings, and then you have... After construction drawing, so they, they and they are they could be two different set of drawings because there are so many errors. And these are digital drawings. 
drawings, I take it? Once they're not again? They, sorry, these are digital drawings, they're not pieces yeah. of paper, I hope. No, they are they are digital yeah. drawings, so they are three yeah. D models basically. And they have so this is like a it is called building information modeling. So every element of the building has its uh, Let's say uh, description. So this is us there. This is our uh, door. This is uh, whatever. Yeah, okay. So then you can verify. Like, imagine that. So there is a law saying about evacuation route. So from every from every room, then there. So for instance, in this room, you have probably like eight or six yeah. evacuation doors, and they are calculated using the amount of the people that would be in this space. Right. I am quite sure that we are out of that today, but uh, normally if you calculate that, so imagine that the, the, the tool what is checking is, uh, is verifying the size of the building and checking if the total amount of the width of the doors is actually good enough for this amount of people. Cool. Okay. And there are many other yeah, for tools, sure, but sure. Uh, yeah. one is uh, easy to understand, and there are many problems in the industry. And are you live at the moment? Like, are you working currently with um, the construction industry and architects and so on? Well, me, myself, an architect. I have been working uh, seven years on large scale construction. So you know all the pain points then? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, I've been, uh, I've been doing some, some project, and then, then I go to the construction site, and there's like, oh, you forgot about that, you forgot about that. Because there is like, there, are, there is architect, engineer, and this and this and this person involved in design and the construction, and they rather improve. They are looking for their profits. They are not thinking about the, the entire project. So that's uh, that's also uh, so. Whenever there are like many changes during the design process, and they are not always coordinated properly. So the coordination is. Uh, yeah. There are so many inputs that there is no time to verify. Yeah. And you mentioned like the building codes. Do they change? Often, yeah, yeah. So you got to change often. So you've got to be able to adapt to that as well constantly. Are the yeah. other building codes codified, or do you have to code them into your application each time? What do you mean they're codified? Like each time it changes, is it defined in a way that you can easily put into application, or do you have to well, get a programmer? To... Oh, they're yeah, they are codified like data, like an Excel spreadsheet. Okay. They are also like, uh, well, it depends on the country, of course, but yeah. here in Germany it works. Okay. 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 And yeah, in well developed countries, it works okay. So, here with Jolocom? Jolocom? Jolocom. 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 Oh, yeah, sorry, yeah. yeah. Um, it's it's a, a. Well, you explain what it is, and then I'll describe what it is and ask some questions about that in a minute. So. Okay, cool. <laughs> So uh, at Yolocom, our vision is to give back the power of data ownership to everyone. Right? So giving back the power of data ownership to every individual. And uh, what we what we have uh, as a product is uh, we do have right now a smart wallet, which is an, uh, an app uh, where you can enter your data. And uh, the data is stored in a private store. So, for example, if you have a server running or something like this, you connect, you connect it, and you can uh, reuse the data basically or navigate the digital world like this. And the cool thing about it is that, for example, let's say you store like your phone information or your ID card information, right, in the wallet. So what you can do is you can go to a bank and, for example, and uh, get this data verified, right? So they run through the, all the checks. So this isn't this isn't a wallet for blockchain. It's using the blockchain as a wallet. Exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Exactly. Exactly. Actually, this was. Uh, I was actually talking about this idea with some people yesterday and saying that this is a, a good idea and that no one had seen quite yet. And but is, is this it? No. No, no, no. no. Just, this is like an example for a freedom box. It's like an old okay. server. That you can right, play. I was wondering. I mean, yeah. we, just, we just brought it to visualize to people that yeah. you can kind of have so this on device. So the banks are on board with this? You said you can take something to the bank? Uh, yeah, there was like an example for a uh, party that... But here in Germany, you could do that now? Um, yeah. So we are now uh, weeks before a close alpha, so we are not actually on the market yet where people okay. can actually use this. Yeah, okay. But of course we are looking for uh, partners where we can uh, kind of uh, uh, tap into their infrastructure uh, and, 
and it's actually a benefit for everyone because if you if you verify, it's kind of a very uh, cost uh, intense pro process, right? Because you do have to have people in place that uh, check you, or uh, when you call, you have to have like this uh, interaction. And why do I have to do it every time that I use the service? A different one, right? Why can we not reuse this when it when it was done already? What what sort of identity were you able to put in? So whatever you like. I mean, if you want to have your ID card in uh, for like legal documents uh, or like a driver's license, for We're example. We're also talking about things like uh, healthcare records, yeah. educational records, yeah. which Sony is now looking into. Yeah. Are you going to include things like... Um, yeah, so we are totally open to whatever data uh, is stored there, right? Uh, but it has to make sense for the user, right? So uh, I guess that's how, how we approach this. And it's, it's, it's local to the device? Uh, we don't store data on the device. We would store it, like, for example, in your own. Like, we call it your own data store. Uh, but what this is, is maybe you have an own server running at home, so you can store it there. Or, like, in this Freedom Box, which is, like, an example that we yeah. kind of use. This is, like, a physical box. Yeah, yeah. And, uh, like, this this runs. And you know that you store it here, and nobody else has actually access to it, right? Or maybe you, 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 you host it in the cloud. So we, we don't really... Like, we would like people to kind of uh, uh, do it their preferred way. Yeah. But if you lose your phone, does it matter? Uh, it doesn't matter because you have you, you log in with the seed phrase in our application. Okay. Exactly. Or if you have one of these at home and it gets stolen, I'm assuming there's a backup, a digital backup? Well, no, that's yeah, that you. Yeah, de- like, that depends on the... On, yeah, it kind of... Yeah. But you would hope it, but you know, this stuff happens to people a lot. We were actually talking about this yesterday that now the uh, the new kind of lo fi hack is called the sock drawer hack. Yeah, 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 yeah. but that's, that's like a yeah. blockchain wallet in the sock drawer. Yeah, so. yeah, 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 <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Okay. And is there a limit to how much you can store? I mean, I, I would think the average person could produce a lot of data mm. over a lifetime. Yeah, I mean, I guess it depends how much you want to pay because it also like, like your own storage is kind of connected to costs, right? So uh, yeah, but we are we are open for scaling, uh, whatever that means, right? It just ha- has to make sense for the user. Yeah, like this is yeah. And so, to your knowledge, you can't be hacked. <laughs> that's that's, I don't think wants to go that's a very there. very difficult question to answer. <laughs> All right, I've been writing about cyber security yeah. today. Then you can put yeah. a microphone in someone in front of someone and say, "Do you want to be hacked?" <laughs> that's a bad idea. Yeah, I, mean, I guess I guess the biggest thing is kind of what they're hacked. I don't know. Yeah. Actually, no, that's fine. Yeah. It doesn't matter if it is because you have the immutable. Yeah. And maybe another cool thing that we have is we have something that is called a smart login. And uh, it's basically an easy way to use services, digital services, where you can log in with your personal data. And you can actually give the service that you use access. Like, like they have to visualize you to you which data they will use. Right? So, for example, like for example, when you use a Facebook login, it's very fast. But the compromise that you do is you actually provide them with the data, right? So they know what kind of service you use, yeah, right? And in our cool. case, the data is yours. It's stored yeah. on your device. Yeah. And you, you, you navigate the digital world much easier.